Hi there. I had a uh, quite a few notes that I took earlier uh, discussing the old way of training in Wei Chibu Karate that I was going to share with my students. But then I, I got thinking that this would sort of take away from the exploration of this m way of learning Wei Chibu. And it also involves the mind. All of a sudden now we're, we're thinking about how that movement should be performed and uh, bringing out the chi and all these things that uh, Shu Shiwa didn't have at his disposal when he was teaching Kanbum. He just said, do these movements. And Kanbum kept doing them until they started to feel different. And uh, maybe he discussed that with uh, Shu Shiwa, I don't know. But I know it took three months doing just that movement before he went on to the next movement. So there was some reason for all that. And uh, I explored this way back in the 80s when I wrote, uh, 70s I guess, when I wrote my second book, Weichiru Karate Do. And I thought, rather than going through all of this, that things that I've learned since the book was written, uh, I. I want, want to share the same adventure that I started taking back then. That's when I started exploring that. But I couldn't find students who really wanted to do that. You know, and I tried it. And it yeah, well, it worked out for a little while, but then people got bored. And they said, well, I know all that. You know, I'm, I'm a, a, a professor or whatever, and I do yoga, and I do tai chi, and I do uh, uh, kung fu. And we have all that stuff in there. So it, it sort of got lost in the, in the transmission from uh, Shushiwa to Kanbum to Kane to Tamiyoshi to me. And, well, let's go back to where I was. And I'm going to bring you the, to that point. Uh, and, and what I've said, shared with you so far in the video, and what I'm going to share with you here in the book, you know, this has been around for a long time. And I want you to explore and see what you come up with. But I know that you will feel different. You will feel a different way of moving. And this is what Sanchen is all about in terms of the movement. And that these movements sort of come out and they, they don't require a thought. It's just you see an object coming at you and you react. But it's not tightening up. You're going to get much more speed. Well, I'm going into all the things, reasons why you should do it. And I want you to discover them. All right, I'm just going to read a, this brief paragraph or two in the Weijiru Karate Do. It says, the Kata Sanchen, meaning three conflicts or three steps. Now, uh, the legend is that when the three spirits or warriors fought together, they were, you couldn't defeat them. But separated, they weren't too tough. They weren't, uh, they weren't the greatest warriors. So they needed all three. And mind, body, spirit, this is another definition of Sanchen. Anyhow, you define it as you wish. If nothing else is impressed upon the student of Wei Chiru Karate, it should be the importance of Sanchen. There are many legends pertaining to great feats of strength the masters were able to accomplish due to their Sanchen training. Whether or not the stories were fully or partially true is really not important. The purpose of, those, of these stories was to make a greater impression on the student's mind than merely, merely saying, do it, it's important. You know, we hear that a lot from teachers. All right. Master Khan Moom felt that for a student to become proficient in karate, all that was necessary for him to learn was San Chen. All is in San Chen was a familiar phrase told to Khan Ai Weiji by his father. And this is still repeated today by Kanai to his students. When asked about the method of teaching Ponge Nun in China, Kanbum told Kanai that all I did for three years was San Chen. Very few students survived this test of patience. When I first began my training, all I did was clean the training floor and toilets area. And on occasion, uh, try to uh, learn some of the movements by watching my senior students. After a while, students would see me going through my movements by myself, and they would give me a little help. 
but the master would not give me any assistance. Finally, after being thoroughly discouraged and fully resigned to the fact that I was never to learn karate, the master motioned for me to come over. You can get the book and read the rest of it. It's an interesting uh, uh, story about uh, the history of how karate came from China over to Okinawa. But the main thing is the importance of Sanshen. And I've told you enough now. Now it's your turn to go and discover. Bye-bye.